Well, Nick, um, alternative medicine does seem to be extremely popular and lots of people seem to go for it. Can you, as a psychologist, think of reasons why it's so popular as compared to orthodox medicine? I think it's, there's nothing really new about alternative medicine. In fact, why make the distinction between alternative medicine and real medicine up until the last, uh, beginning of the last century? Because before that, doctors had almost nothing in their armory except bedside manner and, 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 and hope in order to offer patients. Um, and uh, with the advance of modern scientific medicine, medicine set itself apart from the traditions of healers and, 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 uh, and witch doctors and all the other people who've practised medicine throughout the history of the human species. I suppose species. you could but say that there was a time when orthodox medicine consisted of bloodletting and things, when doing nothing was positively better, and so... Well, it may have been better, it may not have been better. I mean, mm. even such an absurd uh, practice as bloodletting actually may have done people good in the way in which alternative medicines, which have no genuine medical basis to oh. them, will do good because, mean, yeah. because patients respond to the attention from a doctor yeah. whom they yeah. believe in. And if the doctor does something dramatic like letting blood, <laughs> it's likely to work all the better. The more dramatic, the better, yes. I mean, yeah. what I'm saying, of course, is that most of this, uh, the effectiveness of alternative medicine depends on the placebo effect. And we know from a variety of recent scientific studies that placebos work much better if they're strong and powerful, if they look strong and powerful. Coloured pills work better than, than, than yeah. drab coloured ones and big medicine works better than small yeah. medicine yeah. So something which has the authority of instruments and and white coats and so on works and so bloodletting probably in some probably way worked. Yeah. but why has this been such a boost in people going to alternative medicine when scientific medicine is there as probably a more effective alternative i think it's more more difficult to explain it's partly as uh, I think you've suggested yourself that people want to be able to take control of their own bodies and their own health into their own hands, which is much more difficult than it used to be. There's no longer the sense that people are involved in their own in, 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 in making decisions for themselves when they go to the big hospitals or even mm. to the local uh, GP anymore. And alternative medicine offers a much more comfortable, homely, mm. uh, nurturing environment. And uh, somebody who very often somebody who really cares for the patient in an intimate way. And spends time with them too, which, which yeah. a real doctor has probably not that not much. Enough. I mean, yeah. I, think, I think real doctors are increasingly realising that that's, that, that that's an issue for them and, and I think it's, things are changing for the better from what it was a few years ago. But people go to alternative medicine as well because it works and it works in many cases as well, just as well as what they could get from the National Health Service. Um, it works because most of medicine, in fact, is a case of self-cure. When people get better, even under the influence of powerful drugs, most of the cure is often being provided by themselves. And in many cases, the whole of the cure is coming from within their own body. Do you mean something like the immune system? Or, or the, yes, the, um, the immune system, um, the, uh, the control of symptoms, for example. I mean, people feel when they're sick, they fe get fever, they feel nausea, let's say, they feel pain. Those are all self-generated yes. uh, psychological states. I mean, pain is a defense which we mount in order to, to stop ourselves injuring ourselves further. Fever is a way of trying to deal with bacterial invaders. Um, nausea is a way of making us either throw up toxins which we might have taken or certainly not take any more of them. These are all things we're doing to ourselves and just to that extent we can also cure ourselves. When we get better uh, when we, the pain goes down after taking placebo medicine or under the influence of acupuncture, for example. It's our own minds which have reduced the pain. Yes, but why is it better? I mean, surely what you're saying is that we get better anyway. It doesn't matter whether we have any doctors of any kind. I mean, we don't get better anyway because when, uh, if, if I sprain my ankle, for example, and the pain is terrible and I really can't walk, that's not going to get better unless and until I've somehow persuaded myself or been persuaded that it's all right to use this limb again, to use that ankle again, that I'm not going to make things so much worse, that I'm in good hands, that I'm safe, that I can afford not to have to... Uh, so it's, it's the reassurance of having somebody coming along and telling you, it's OK, you can walk on that ankle. Yes, but I, why, why then would alternative medicine be better? Surely an, an ordinary doctor might do that. I think ordinary doctors do do yeah, that. So you're saying it's exactly equally good, you're not saying it's yes. better. I mean, a simple, rather familiar example of a placebo effect, I guess we've all known it, is when we go to the doctor with an ache or a pain or feeling sick, and by the time we've sat in the doctor's surgery for an hour, the symptoms have miraculously I've done it again and again myself. <laughs> I've asked yes. my local GP how often that happens. Yeah. He says it's you know it's terribly common, and, and the patients are very embarrassed and they think they're wasting their doctor's time. Yeah. But of course, 
the doctor was an essential part of it. Um, They knew they were about to be put into good hands and therefore they could now afford to relax and let their guard down and to to, to not not show the symptoms of illness, the illness behaviours which are there in order to protect us, to protect people from from uh, getting into further trouble when their bodies are not, you know, are, are potentially uh, unwell or or, there's, uh, or the immune resources are going to run out or whatever. But we wouldn't want to go too far and say that we don't actually need trained doctors at all. Just anybody in a white coat who looks like a doctor and has a stethoscope around his neck will will do. I mean, there are certain things that doctors do, which um, only doctors are trained to do. And uh, we mustn't forget yes, about of that. Of course, that's true. But <laughs> but let's remember that doctors are also trained to do things which uh, which are equally part of being a doctor, but which which don't have any particular physiological or pharmaceutical background to them. They're trained to know how to talk to patients, how to reassure them, um, how to tell to give them a, re- a reassuring case history, and so on. And that's part of the art of medicine. Um, bedside manner is what really matters, mm. although it's not often done at the bedside mm. anymore. Mm. Uh, but there are. Operations, there are vaccines, there are antibiotics, there are there are things which um, really do massively cure, of course, and, yes. and uh, um, wouldn't want to give the impression that those things are, are not important. But then, you know, of course, they're important, um, and you know, major surgery is we unwise on the whole to do placebo surgery. But though, for there's evidence in the case of heart surgery that placebo surgery can work quite well, or for example, in in surgery on the knee, very convincing evidence that that. Uh, placebo, placebo surgery to the knee, just simply uh, a cut, making a cut and incision mm-hmm. in the skin but not mm-hmm. doing anything more can actually cure uh, a damaged knee joint. So uh, we mustn't underestimate the body's power to do what we think is being done by medical technology. What do you think is the physiological route by which the knee joint gets cured or, or you even said the heart just now? Well, it's, it's, we have evolved uh, over much longer than the course of human history, extraordinarily sophisticated self-healing mechanisms. I mean, the immune system is is the most obvious mm. what, what example of it. But you know, uh, tissue repair, um, bone healing, and so on—it's all part of our natural repertoire for of, of self-cure. And on the whole, we you know we're deploying it all the time. But sometimes it seems we need to get permission to use it, and that's what a doctor or a priest or a shaman or, or even a, your best friend can sometimes. Uh, 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 that's the role they can play. They give you, as it were, license to use your resources by telling you that you're, it's okay, you're going to be all right. Let's take the case of, of your immune system, for example. Immune resources are very expensive. I mean, and in the past when we didn't have reliable diets and so on, we couldn't afford to use all our immune resources at one go. Uh, we couldn't th- afford to throw them all against a potential invader. Um, because who knows, we might get sick again the next day or we might be going to starve or whatever it might be. And so people must have died in the past with enough resources left to cure their illness because they've been programmed by their evolutionary history to be cautious as it happens, too cautious. Um, it's still happening. People die from cancers when there's enough, their immune resources still potentially could have actually cured the cancer. Uh, the ex- analogy I use is this. We know that people die in car accidents um, because they don't slam the brakes on hard enough. Um, and uh, it's been known for some time. Mercedes-Benz has now got a new device. It's called Brake Assist, which what happens is that as soon as you push the brakes pretty hard, the machinery takes over and slams them right down. Um, and I think that's what we, in a sense, ought to be working for in, in medicine. And alternative medicines are helping us to do that. They're helping us to, to use our resources in a way which we otherwise wouldn't have felt safe in doing. Um, real medicine does the same. But I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, underestimate the powers, and sometimes the superior powers, of people who go under funny names or have funny uh, kinds of... of, of, of uh, 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 authorities written up on the wall and so on because some people respond to that information much more than they would to the conventional information in a doctor's surgery.